That's her and her brother and her stepbrother. <laughs> that was last Christmas. To her family, Rebecca Sedwick was a normal 12-year-old kid with a big heart and goofy sense of humor. She seemed happy until the day she changed her screen name to that dead girl and then killed herself. Bullying's bad. Grady Judd is the sheriff in Polk County, Florida. When you stand over a 12-year-old child that's dead that jumped from a cement silo, your heart's broken forever. Her mother says Rebecca was being bullied in school and online. Hateful messages and texts sent on popular social sites such as Facebook. I think the biggest one that stood out to me was drink bleach and die. Um, go kill yourself. You're ugly. Nobody likes you. I hate you. Why are you still alive? Officials at Crystal Lake Middle School in Florida changed Rebecca's classes to get her away from the bullies. When that didn't work, Rebecca's mom pulled Rebecca out of sixth grade to homeschool her instead. She thought Rebecca was safe. But for a tech-savvy child, shutting out the world is not that simple. And I gave her my old cell phone for her to get a text messaging app on to, mm. to contact her friends. Rebecca found her way back online to the students allegedly tormenting her. She wanted to see what was going on in her world. And unfortunately, in her world, there were bullies that were tormenting her literally to her death. And it wasn't just Facebook and Instagram. Rebecca also had accounts on sites like Ask FM and Kick, which offer greater anonymity. And it is clear to us that the directions that these bullies were giving was kill yourself, you know, end your life because we hate you so much. It's unclear why Rebecca ultimately snapped. CNN reviewed portions of her journals and the police report. There were signs of family problems, evidence of bullying, and a reported breakup with a boy. When in early September, she climbed the tower she could see from her home and jumped. Two arrests we made last night. Soon after, Sheriff Grady Judd arrested two of the girls who had apparently been bullying Rebecca online, releasing the children's names even though they were minors. And she killed herself, but I don't give a... Guadalupe Shaw and Caitlin Roman were charged not with Rebecca's death, but with stalking, charges that were later dropped in exchange for court-ordered counseling. Although both girls posted nasty messages on their social media sites, through their lawyers, they have each denied responsibility for Rebecca's death. They didn't get away with it at all. Had we not arrested them, they never would have been required or volunteered for such counseling. So it was a win-win. Critics say the sheriff overreacted by charging the girls and that he failed to focus on all the other warning signs that Rebecca was in trouble. For example, in her written journals, she talks repeatedly about suicide. Quote, I go to bed every night hoping it would be the last time. Also, people don't know how it feels to be hated by everyone that used to be so close. Online, Rebecca posted the results of a depression test, and while it's unclear if she took the test herself, it concludes, you are having suicidal thoughts. This is a serious warning sign, and you must seek help quickly. There's also an Instagram image that reads, quote, sometimes I just want to disappear and see if anyone would miss me. Sheriff Judd said Rebecca had been inundated with hateful comments on sites like Ask FM and Kick. Ask FM, Snapchat, and Kick is asking f to get bullied. For anyone using or trying to monitor these sites, because posts can be made anonymously, it's extremely difficult to know who's saying what, and therefore very difficult to trace. Rebecca's mom admits she didn't know the extent of her daughter's life online and the signs of trouble brewing there. She and her attorney are now trying to get a law passed, making parents of bullies liable for their children's behavior. It really starts at home because the children learn everything from their parents. Bullying is already illegal in Florida, but Rebecca's lawyer wants to attach even stronger penalties, including community service and juvenile detention. Kids need to know it's actually a crime. While it's a start, none of it will take away the pain Rebecca's mother feels every day. How do you deal with the silences that have been left by Rebecca? I still talk to her. Um, I sleep with one of her stuffed animals. She knows now what she would have done differently on that terrible day. I would have taken her cell phone in the room with me. And when my alarm went off at 6.30, rather than jump in the shower like I always did, I would have walked out there and just and hugged her and said, baby, talk to me.